Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to a new edition of the Daily Debate. I'm your host for tonight, Mohammed Abdelrahim. And tonight we'll be talking about the BRICS Summit Russia 2024 that just concluded its uh, activities uh, uh, late on Thursday uh, evening. And uh, the uh, summit saw uh, Egypt's participation uh, for the very first time. His Excellency the President was there. Uh, um, in the three-day uh, uh, event and he highlighted the BRICS role in developing international systems and promoting cooperation between uh, uh, BRICS countries. We'll be highlighting the President's uh, speech in the final day uh, of the conference here and we'll also be uh, taking a look at the overall outcome of this very important gathering um, that uh, combines just under uh, half of the world's uh, population and uh, half of the world's economic might. And we are glad to have with us tonight uh, uh, to discuss uh, BRICS uh, uh, Summit Russia 2024, Dr. Mungi Ali Badr, Minister Pleni Potentiary and Board Member of the United Nations Association Egypt. A very good evening to you, Dr. Badr. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much and a good evening for you and your viewers. It's a pleasure to be with me as usual. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rabedr. Allow us, please, as uh, we always do, and allow us, dear viewers, first to watch a report uh, okay. about uh, the main topic here. And we'll be focusing uh, on uh, uh, His Excellency's, the President's uh, uh, speech uh, on the final day and his participation in Kazan in uh, uh, the Russia 2024 BRICS Summit. Let's watch the report and come back. President Abdel Fattah Sisi participated in the proceedings of the first general session of BRICS bloc in Kazan, Russia. The president delivered Egypt's speech in which he stressed that he is happy at Egypt's first participation as a member of the bloc, pointing out that Cairo is keen on effective involvement in the group's mechanisms as part of efforts to develop strategic relations among the member states. The president appreciated efforts exerted by Russia's presidency of the bloc this year and its plans to expand partnerships among member states in a way reflecting the common desire to develop its work, said the spokesman for the presidency. President Sisi sheds light during his speech on regional crises and international conflicts, which press for the need of collective work ensuring the effectiveness of the international community to end such conflicts. The President pointed out to the failure of the international community to end the Israeli aggression on the Gaza Strip and Lebanon, despite the continuous warnings of the serious repercussions of such conflicts. The President highlighted the role of the BRICS group in developing the international system, referring to the importance of promoting cooperation and introducing effective development mechanisms similar to the debt for climate swap to magnify the benefit from existing financial mechanisms in the aftermath of the expanded development finance gap which hit $4 trillion. President Sisi called for taking effective steps to reform the world financial structure, including the international financing institutions and development banks, to meet the needs of developing countries. He added that the President pressed for the need to carry out joint projects in the main economic sectors, especially the energy infrastructure, industry, science, technology and innovation, as well as cultural cooperation among the peoples of the bloc. Welcome back. Thank you very much, uh, Manel Alibieri and Rasha Abdel Hamid, for this uh, report. We're back here in the studio with Dr. Mungi uh, Ali Bedr, Minister Plenipotentiary and member of uh, board member of uh, the United Nations Association Egypt. Now, Dr. Bedr, addressing the BRICS Plus Summit, His Excellency the President said uh, on Thursday that uh, the uh, meeting comes at a critical uh, international time, rife with crises and complex challenges and witnessing a threat to the credibility of multilateral international system uh, dominated by protectionist tendencies and unilateral policies, one yeah. of the most important uh, uh, statements uh, handed out today. Uh, uh, a comment, please. 
Uh, in fact, His Excellency Mr. President delivered a very uh, prominent uh, speech and he stressed many points. Number one, on international level, regional level, and the local level. Uh, uh, relating uh, regional level, in fact, the problem of uh, Gaza, Middle East, yeah. uh, including Gaza, Lebanon, yeah. uh, Yemen, and Israel, of course. Yeah. On international, it's uh, the double standard. Double standard measures which apply by uh, Western countries. Mm. And also, uh, His Excellency Mr. President confirmed that the system of Bretton Woods, which is set up in 1944, uh, doesn't help developing countries to make sustainable economic development or relieve that problem. So these are the two points which uh, Mr. President uh, stressed that we need as a developing countries, we need fair share from uh, economic uh, uh, or world lead economic. Uh, uh, number uh, three, for the international level, we are looking for our interest by east or west. We don't have any uh, uh, policy against west, but uh, uh, Mr. President history is that we have a strategic relation with the United States of America and the European Union. In the meantime, we are now a member and breaks since the beginning of uh, January. Mr. Uh, uh, he pointed there, sorry to interrupt uh, Dr. Bad, but he pointed there to enhancing what he called the South-South uh, cooperation. Yes, yes. It's a very valid point that South-South cooperation came back again and we started to hear about South-South uh, cooperation. Because of what? Uh, 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 on 1955 it was non aligned movement which is set up in Bandung in Indonesia by the late Gamal Abdel Nasser, uh, Nehru and Ahmed Sukarno. And Tito. Uh, and uh, Joseph Prostito. Yes. Uh, Yugoslav, former Yugoslav. Yeah, yeah, ex Yugoslav. Yeah. And uh, again, it was the group of 77 which set up by uh, our uh, Secretary General, Mr. Botrus Botrus Ghali, uh, and also group of 15. Uh, so, if we are talking about cooperation between South South, this it will be led by China. And China it's exerted of effort in this regard. Last month it was a summit between China and Africa in Beijing. And in fact, Chinese people they are very generous with African countries. They already allocate fifty billion dollars to African countries. 30, as a credit, 30 billion as a credit line, 10 billion as a grant, another 10 billion as direct investment. So China, they are using BRICS as a mean mm. to lead South countries. This and this is the interest of, in the interest of all, isn't it? I mean, so, so this is an attempt in the long term uh, to try and get rid of the unipolar yeah. world and get back to uh, what was bipolar or, uh, or multipolar. Yeah, perhaps. yeah, multipolar. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, for developing countries and the emerging market, it's very important to move from unipolar to multipolar system. Because of what you have two options. In the, uh, in the past, we have only one option, unipolar uh, system. Uh, uh, let us go back to His Excellency Mr. President. In fact, he attended all meetings for BRICS in Kazan. Yes. And in the meantime, he held a lot of meeting, bilateral meeting with President of China, President of Russia, President of Iran, uh, and also with South Africa. The main items which the discussion done between the President in Kazan summit, it's moving from uni to multipolar. Number two, looking for a uh, fair share mm. from uh, uh, world economy. Mm. Number three, to send a message to United States of America and the Western countries that it's already finished. If you are going to cooperate with emerging market in fair uh, uh, rules, 
It's okay, you are most welcome. Other point that the system of cooperation between developed and the developing country, it's already changed from one zero situation to partnership cooperation. In fact, this system of participation, it was settled by China, followed by Russia, and sometimes India. So, Egypt as a historical country, and is a country with history and uh, civilization, and also we, we consider ourselves as emerging market. So we would like to have a part of cake. So this cake depends on the will of the President Sisi, number two, Egyptian society. We are going to compete. We are going to compete with China, India, Russia, Brazil, South Africa, Iran, United States, uh, 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 United uh, Arab Emirates, United Saudi Arab Arabia, Emirates. Ethiopia. Okay, yeah. are you ready? Your culture will allow to our tenage to compete, yes. I reply to you, direct reply, yes. We have a youth who can compete, and they can compete, Western or youth from East. Uh, I don't want to repeat again my experience when I was in Egyptian embassy in India, uh, that uh, they are very, India is very developed in uh, IT. And they mention that the competition will come from Egypt. So that's why the Minister of Telecommunication and the IT, uh, His Excellency Dr. Amr Talat, he set up many uh, technology centers uh, covering Egypt from north till uh, south, 27 technology centers. And also we start to have uh, uh, college and universities only for IT and AI. So this it's a very uh, positive point because of what? Now, we should concentrate as Egyptian government, as a, a, a Egyptian civil society, as Egyptian private sector, as an Egyptian family, we should concentrate on industries which have high value added. And this is high value added, uh, you can find it in IT, AI, chemicals, uh, engineering industry. So the most important point, or we can consider it's our message now from your channel. What our man, uh, message? Our message that we, I don't need yours to be learn IT and AI. I need youth who can be inventor. And the inventor, it could be in agriculture sector, in industry, in, 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 yeah. in chemicals, mm. in logistics, mm. even in mass mm. bureau. Mm. I need inventors who mm. bring to me new ideas. Mm. And is this new ideas? Creativity, innovation. Yes, yes. This is mm. what we should concentrate. I don't, I don't want uh, a, a graduate from uh, the University of Technology. I need this grad to be inventors. I need so his or her brains. Yeah, yes. yeah, I need his brain. I, I, I want to go back again, uh, Dr. Uh, Badr, allow me to uh, the... Um, Bricks. Poli yeah, yeah, of course, the breaks. I, I'm talking about the, the political uh, um, uh, segment or section of items of, or items yeah. of, of, of the discussion. Declaration, yeah. Because the president today, I mean, really had some very strong words. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, he said that for more than a year, on the Palestinian people besieged in the Gaza Strip, mm. surrounded by all forms of killing and terror, yeah. and the extension of these attacks to Lebanon uh, is the greatest evidence of what our world and the international system have reached today in terms of emptying principles mm. and applying double standards. Standard, this comes in addition to the absence of accountability and justice regarding the violations committed against international covenants and the rules of international and humanitarian law, yeah. which resulted in an unprecedented humanitarian disaster, yeah. of course, talking about the Israeli aggressions against the Palestinians in, 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 in Gaza and elsewhere, and in, now in Lebanon and the West Bank. So these are very, very strong and important words. What can the BRICS, what can the BRICS you, uh, do uh, 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 here? Okay. I, I got your point. China. 
yeah. Russia. Yes, yes. In fact, since 1948 and the Egypt in our foreign policy that we concentrate on the right of Palestinians to have their state, their independent state, and in the meantime to live in peace with all their neighbors. And also we have many message to uh, Israeli government that we would like to live in peace. We, do, we, we are not against Jewish, but we are against the against occupation of Arab lands. Yes. And the occupation of mm. the land of other mm. countries. And of killing innocent yes, uh, of course, civilians. It's a very defenseless defenseless story, civilians. In fact. And this reflecting in Kazan declaration. Mm. I'm going to, to read to you what come in yeah. the declaration. Mm. They support Palestinian admission to the United Nations. And the BRICS also retreated its support for the admission of the state of Palestine. Mm. As a full member of the, uh, of the United Nations, and in this context uh, of the firm commitment to the two states solution, again, the, the retreat the importance of two-state solution based on international uh, law, including the resolution of the United uh, Nations Security Council and the United Nations General Assembly and the Arab Peace Initiative by the late King Abdullah, the, 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 the Saudi king of yeah. Saudi Arabia, which provide for establishment of an, an independent and fully sovereign state of Palestine according to international recognized border as June 4th of June 1967 with the capital of East, East Jerusalem, Jerusalem course, yeah. living side by side in beast and security with Israel so we we are very modest and very practical uh, uh, people that we uh, uh, call for two states live in peace with our neighbor and we don't want to kick Israeli uh, 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 for the sea as we mentioned it before no we would like to live uh, in peace so uh, Kazan declaration documents in fact uh, 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 the mention mm. in, in, in the declaration we affirm the emergence of new center of power political decision making and the economic growth mm. which help lay the foundation uh, for a more uh, uh, just a democratic and the balanced multi multi uh, uh, polar world system so, so a strong stance there yeah, in yeah, support of the strong. Palestinian rights yeah so the point you know would you think after Kazan declaration we are going very fast to multi polar system it could Hopefully. be it could be mm. but it depends on two elements number one the power of BRICS countries or the power of member of the BRICS. Number two, the reaction of United States of America. What's the reaction? They are going to fight against BRICS or they are going to or accept the BRICS. Because of what? Because of the currency policy, mm. dollar situation. Mm. Now the, 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 the reserve of dollar, they are going down from 85% to 55 percent and this is it will go down if BRICS countries or BRICS member countries they succeed to have their own currency this number one number two if they are going to increase the dealing of trade by national currency number three if they are going to set up a new system of payment of uh, in, in service sector and also in good sectors Dr. Bedr, uh, uh, allow, allow me just to interrupt here. Um, uh, uh, sorry for that. We'll be back. We'll be watching another report. And then we will discuss in detail the power of the BRICS, this group of nations that really combines together almost, almost half of the world's population and almost uh, half of its uh, under, of no, course, no, no. under it's, 50 it's exactly 40, 35. 35, 35 37. Percent, yeah. okay. As Mr. Putin mentioned from few minutes back. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, but, but a very important uh, bulk and, and chunk of the world's population and the world's uh, might and the world's uh, economic uh, power. Uh, uh, 
and all of the opportunities for the member countries, the inner trade, the possibility of a, a unified currency. We'll get back to all of this after watching this report, Dr. Badr and dear viewers. By the way, in an event that the Kremlin described as one of the most important foreign policy events in Russia's history, these are the words of the Kremlin. So let's watch uh, this report about Kazan uh, Russia 2024 BRICS summit. At the BRICS summit in Kazan, Russian President Vladimir Putin highlighted the economic opportunities within the member countries. He proposed establishing a joint grain exchange and a BRICS investment platform. He also emphasized the need for a balanced approach to climate issues, ensuring that the climate agenda does not impede market competition. The three-day BRICS summit, which included representatives from 36 countries such as China, India, the United Arab Emirates, and South Africa, highlighted the shortcomings of U.S.-led initiative aimed at isolating Russia due to its involvement in Ukraine. The coalition that started with Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa has grown to include Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, the United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia. Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Malaysia have officially submitted applications for membership and many other countries have shown interest in joining as well. Russian President Putin stated that several BRICS nations rank among the top producers of grain, legumes and oil seeds globally. He suggested establishing a BRICS grain exchange to help create fair and reliable price indicators for these products and raw materials, emphasizing its importance in maintaining food security. This initiative aims to safeguard interests against negative external influences, speculation, and the artificial scarcity of food items. The Kremlin has positioned BRICS as a rival to the Western-led global system and intensified its outreach to global South nations following its military intervention in Ukraine in February 2022. Russia has actively advocated for the establishment of a new payment system to provide an alternative to the SWIFT banking network, enabling Moscow to circumvent Western sanctions and engage in trade with its partners. The Kremlin has characterized the BRICS summit as one of the most important foreign policy events in Russia's history. Welcome back again, dear viewers, and thanks again to Manel Ebieri and Rasha Abdel Hamid for this uh, report. Back in the studio with Dr. Mungi Ali Badr, Minister Plenty Pontichieri and board member of the United uh, Nations Association uh, Egypt. Now, Dr. Badr, let, let's talk about the potential of this great, great grouping that started, of course, uh, as BRIC, yeah. and then the S, South Africa, was Excellent. added, and now uh, Egypt and, and a, a host of other countries have, have joined. As we know that uh, uh, BRICS started on 1996 as an idea uh, and they set up this BRIC on uh, 2006. 2011 South Africa joined BRIC. First of last January four countries already joined uh, BRICS. So now we call BRICS Plus. Uh, BRICS in fact uh, it's an economic gathering. It's not association. It's not organization. Till this moment, it's a group. Number two, uh, they concentrate on economic and commercial and investment and infrastructure items. But if you have a look about Kazan declaration, you are going to find a lot of items related political uh, affairs. Mm, mm. So it will, it will, it give me sign that this group very soon will be political and the economic organization, not economic uh, only. only. Mm. Number uh, two, I would like to stress on the declaration itself. Mm. Number one. 
The countries call for reforming the Bretton Woods institution by increasing the contribution of developing countries to the global economy. You see, this he tried to play with the feeling of developing countries. I am defending your right. I would like to have more right in international organization. I would like to help you for sustainable economic development. And this is it, the reflection for the people in developing countries. It will be very positive. So uh, I'm not admiring that more than 40 countries request to be mm. a member in BRICS. No, You're not so surprised. 13, mm. yes, at all. 13 countries already applied. Mm. But you know, they put a system mm. not to be a member directly, but it, it will be two stages. The first stage to be country partner. The second stage to be full member. So, for example, Algeria, Turkey, Malaysia, Indonesia, and even Mexico. And you know this, it astonished me completely. Mexico is the south of the United States of America. They already request to be a member. Mm. And they mentioned that we are going to distribute all the requests for the nine countries, including Egypt, to express their opinion about shall we accept this country to be a member or to be a country partner or no? Right. This number. Uh, 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 number uh, uh, two, Washington started to be worried about this group. And of course, they start to be worried, not only because it consists of strong countries, no, because of dollar, because this BRICS will affect the, uh, dollar, uh, uh, the dollarization. The, the BRICS talked about de-dollarization, but, yeah. but of course this is something that's a bit far-fetched, right? It will take a lot of time. No. Uh, no. You don't think so? No, 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 no. no. The, the, the one currency for BRICS, it will take a long time. But uh, the situation of dollar will be affected, yes, from now. Because of what? Number one, we start to exchange goods between BRICS member using national Local currency. Car yes, national currency. You see? Yeah. And number uh, two, now the loans and the ground also in national currencies. Mm. So the demand of dollar will be decreased. So this gathering yes. will have its own, like monetary fund and World Bank and stuff like that, its own, it's going to have no, its no, own? It, it will be long term, not short mm. term. Okay. Short mm. term is already started. Mm. It will affect, yes, mm. it will affect the dollar mm. situation globally. Mm. But it doesn't finish uh, the situation of mm. the dollar or United States of America. No, it will take time. How long? There mm. is estimation. Mm. 10 years, 15 years, mm. 20 years, but most of uh, Of course, when you say it doesn't finish, uh, you, you mean uh, 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 diminish the, the power of, yes, uh, yes, of the yes, dollar. Of you don't mean no, uh, no, no, finish no, no, it no. off. It was just like no, thinking about it's diminishing the power, making it, you know, the, the, the leading currency, but sure. not the only currency, no, as, no. as is the case yes. right now, yes, more yes. or less. Thank you, I mean. Thank you for this uh, mm. explanation. Mm. Uh, 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 it's a shrink of... Mm. The, 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 the power the dominance, of dollar yeah. and mm. also mm. the power of a uh, uh, state's economy itself. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you, you know, this yeah. is a history like right. that. Number two, for the Kazan uh, declaration, the group will study a creation of unified transport platform to ensure a, a multi-modal logistic service between BRICS countries. Mm. This it's very important. So uh, they, will, they would like, or Russia, Russia itself, they would like to release the effect of sanction. Mm. Okay. Number three, the countries welcome the creation of new investment platform using the infrastructure of the new develop, of development bank. You know, in this uh, uh, summit, yes. the change the main goals of new investment bank to be a, 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 a multi 
uh, investment bank uh, uh, doesn't uh, deal with the, with the problem of currency or uh, the deficit, no. Mm. It will deal with all, starting with infrastructure, uh, ending with monetary policies. Uh, uh, number uh, four, it's very important. Yes. The country support is a Russian initiative to create grain exchange right a joint grain and that exchange, it will cover yes. agricultural sector mm. in future mm. and this is very important especially mm. for egypt right we, we are the biggest importer of wheat globally and this it will help us if we are going to be a member uh, uh, in this initiative this it means i'm going to save at least six billion dollars mm. Uh, next point, the countries agreed to transform new developing bank into multilateral bank, as we mentioned mm -hmm. before. Brexit countries are processing to unveiling a single currency, but it will not be implemented in near future. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a negotiation between Brexit countries to conclude the unification mm -hmm. of the legal framework. What happened during the summit? Uh, the Russian president, Mr. Vladimir Putin, he come in to the meeting and he has in hand a uh, paper of uh, BRICS currency. Most of the audience, they ask it, is it the new? He mentioned no, it's just a memory. Mm -hmm. it's <laughs> souvenir. Yeah, souvenir. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a souvenir mm -hmm. for the, the summit. Mm -hmm. But it has a message. Of course. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, uh, new currency for BRICS I don't think it will come soon. It will take time. Mm. So, a few minutes back, I think exactly one hour or one and a half hour, it was a press conference by the president of Russia, uh, Mr. Vladimir Putin, and he mentioned many points. Number one, uh, he mentioned uh, 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 that we are going to develop our cooperation uh, between BRICS countries. Number two, uh, that we have a system of admission to BRICS, and we are going to call all countries to mention their opinion about the, 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 the admission of new countries. Number three, he mentioned that the new uh, summit, it will be in Brazil coming yes. year. Yes. And he mentioned that we already concluded more than 200 events during the presidency of Russia for BRICS countries. And also uh, he uh, mentioned to some political aspects like war with uh, Ukraine mm. and also like the aggression in Middle East and uh, in fact he expressed uh, in very positive words and the sentences that we are ready to reach uh, peace negotiation with Ukraine but the problem coming from the West they don't uh, like and they already promised us uh, many things and unfortunately they didn't fulfill and he mentioned that our troops now they, they, they are in good situation in, in war with Ukraine. Uh, related aggression in Middle East, mm. he mentioned that uh, we respect uh, Lebanon border mm. and we call Israel to withdraw their troops and mm. they stop uh, their aggression against the south of Lebanon and for uh, Palestinian or for Gaza Strip, mm. he uh, 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 called for uh, ceasefire immediately and to allow for human aid to come into Gaza Strip uh, very soon. And in fact, he mentioned very uh, positive sentences that BRICS group itself, they appreciate the effort done by Egypt and the Qatar to uh, reach uh, to try fire reach, yeah, of course, and uh, also yeah, to, 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 to bring in or the to humanitarian aid, aid, uh, as, aid as much to as possible. Uh, Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, as usual, uh, Egypt uh, with its role, it's a very big role uh, 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 and uh, also I can uh, mention that our joining to Prex uh, group, it will bring many uh, positive uh, uh, benefit to Egypt. So, so this is a win-win situation, right? A win for Egypt, a okay. big win for Egypt, yeah. and also uh, there will be advantages for, oh. for the BRICS uh, yes, group yeah. itself. You are right. what, what sectors economically you it's think okay. Dr. Badr can, can really benefit yeah, okay. more from this uh, cooperation? Number one, 
you are going to import your raw material with good quality and low price. Number two, it will be a good chance for you to import foreign direct investment from uh, China, Russia, and uh, United Arab Emirates, and uh, uh, even Brazil. Uh, number three, you shall you, you shall have two options if you need technology. You can have it from uh, Far East uh, with low cost, and it will be applicable in uh, in Egypt. Uh, uh, number five. Uh, this country's group, uh, uh, BRICS group, there are two countries that are full member in Security Council. So uh, it, it will help you if you have any critical situation. And so we have two veto uh, Yeah, two. Yeah. Uh, holders. You, it's yeah. Russia and mm -hmm. China. Yeah. And this is very good. Mm. Uh, uh, number uh, three. China. Although we hate the veto, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. This region, yeah. we, don't, we don't like the veto. But if you guarantee two members, it's, uh, it's very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good for Egypt yeah. and the Arab countries, not yeah. only for Egypt. Uh, 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 the last point, this breaks create for you more options, two options. So you have the option to deal with West, and you have another option to deal with the East. And this competition between East and the West, it will be the benefit to be uh, to emerging market and uh, for Egypt. The last point you see, because of trade war, because of China and the United States of America, and even... Especially, especially if uh, uh, Mr. Trump comes back to, yeah. to, the, uh, to the White House. Yes. Yeah. China start to think to reallocate their industries in some countries like Egypt. Mm -hmm. So we expect a lot of Chinese direct investment in Asia because of this. So now, if as L I said, lots we have of good a problem, are coming. We have again. It's okay. All uh, right. Uh, the last point, in fact, yes, briefly. Uh, uh, the last point is that Egypt now proof regionally and globally that we can play a very active role for peace and sustainable economic Indeed, uh, as development. Always. It's been a historic summit, yeah. the Russia 2024 BRICS uh, uh, summit uh, uh, in uh, Kazan. Uh, dear viewers, on behalf of you, we thank very much our dear distinguished guests with us here in the studio, Dr. Mungi Ali Badr, Minister Pleni Potentiary and board member of the United Nations Association Egypt. Always a great pleasure to have you with us, sir. Thank you for you, and also, uh, not bon nuit or good night. Good night. All right. Both of them, eh? <laughs> night. Thank you. Night, sir. Thank you very much. And dear viewers, please do not go away. Uh, stay with Nile TV. We'll be now watching a report uh, about uh, uh, the Prime Minister's participation uh, uh, earlier on Thursday in the closing session of the second edition of the International Conference on Population, Health and Human Development 2024, which was held in the new administrative capital under the auspices and patronage of His Excellency the President. So let's watch this report, and that's the final item of the daily debate. I'm Mohammed Abdurrahim, and this is goodbye. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli witnessed on Thursday evening the closing session of the second edition of the International Conference on Population, Health and Human Development 2024, which was held in the new administrative capital under the patronage of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, President of the Republic, under the slogan, Human Development for a Sustainable Future, in the presence of a number of ministers, officials and representatives of relevant authorities. During the closing session, Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, the Deputy Prime Minister for Human Development and Minister of Health and Population, said the conference had witnessed over the course of five days the positive impact of collective cooperation, the exchange of ideas and visions, and joint work for a healthier, more just and prosperous future for all the world's population. He noted that the second edition completed the dialogue that began in 2023 
2023 on population and health issues in addition to the human development axis which is more comprehensive and consistent with the human being and which emphasizes the importance of investing in human capital to achieve sustainable development by working to integrate human development into the core of targets and facing population and health challenges within a more comprehensive framework seeking to achieve an integrated approach to building the human being. The Deputy Prime Minister for Human Development pointed out that the activities of this year's conference had witnessed the holding of 165 main and dialogue sessions on population, health and human development, each of which witnessed the breadth and depth of discussions as 1,167 speakers, session chairpersons and supervisors participated in these sessions representing international and local experts who shared their experiences and knowledge in addition to the presence of 112 international and Egyptian organizations that cooperated to advance the issue of human development and nearly 4,000 trainees participated in the fellowship program. This comes in addition to many scientific sessions organized by the hospitals and educational institutes, authority to develop professional and skill training for young doctors and witness the attendance of nearly 38.7 thousand participants. Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar added that these figures confirm the effect of participation and fruitful cooperation that characterized the Population, Health and Human Development Conference 2024 and reflect the growing recognition that human development is not just concepts, frameworks and strategies, but rather a fundamental pillar upon which a prosperous and just societies are built. He noted that the second edition of the conference provided an opportunity to discuss, namely, the National Human Development Program and the National Health Strategy 2024-2030, as these two strategies represent a clear roadmap for achieving universal health coverage, enhancing aspects of national health security, and enabling individuals to achieve their full potentials in line with Egypt's vision 2030 for sustainable development.